Welcome to a lesson with Dr. Powell. Let's take a look at a version of Hensel's lemma. Suppose that we have a polynomial in zx and consider its reduction mod p. Suppose that where p is a prime. Suppose that we, in z, let's suppose that we um, take, uh, have an element a of fp that um, is a root of this polynomial um, in the mod p. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to uh, extend this a up to an element or lift it up to an element of zp, where these are the p-adic integers, such that this polynomial right here, f of a tilde, is um, equal to zero. So this is a root. This is a root of this polynomial um, in zp, and we'd like also um, a tilde to be the unique um, extension, such that um, of a um, uh, where where a tilde um, mod p is going to be congruent to a. If we think about a um, here as, as a, being an element of ZP or just an integer itself, if you kind of think about any, any lift of A. Um, in fact, we can just take a simple one such that if we have a p-adic expansion of A tilde um, as a series of powers of P, then A would be like the, like the uh, constant part and then the rest of the time would be in um, PZP. For the rest of the of the expansion, so um, well, I mean, it's inside of it. So a tilde would be in there. So kind of we can kind of think about that roughly um, as we move along. So that's so we'd like a tilde to be the unique extension of a um, such that would make this happen. Let's talk about the uniqueness for just a second. Based upon our assumption um, of this being separable. Okay, so um, let's take the and the factorization of f bar here, um, and um, and this factorization will factor into uh, linear terms, um, and then maybe some that aren't linear. But if it has, but all the roots that actually are in f p will produce linear factors, and there'll be one of each because of separability. So suppose we have some. Um, some different roots. So A, maybe we have a B and maybe we have a C or something like that. Now, when we, now when we lift it up here and uh, let's think about F of X um, having roots in QP, which is a field of characteristic zero. Um, and uh, we have, and this is a field right here, we have unique factorization in this field or, well, in this um, polynomial ring, and we have unique factorization in this polynomial ring. Um, and suppose that we have different lifts. Well, if we have different lifts, those are act that are roots, um, then when we factor, we'll also have linear factors for the polynomial over QP. So um, uh, we'll have different uh, factors here. Now, each of these in particular, um, will live in, um, okay, so uh, assuming that this is a monic polynomial, um, actually all of these will be, will live in ZP itself. And so, um, and we can mod, mod each of these guys out. And uh, it's, since it's solution over here, it should be a solution. Um, when we mod, it should be a solution over here. So, um, now the way this, okay, so let's think about degrees for a minute, right? So the degree of the part that factors into linear parts will also factor into linear parts over here and the degrees will be the same of, of those portions of the factor of, of F. And um, so the degrees are the same and we have unique factorization, right? And, um, and these both guys, both are separable. And since, um, and this completely fills it out in different ways. And so this will match it, meaning that each of these 
um, their mods will be in diff different mod. Um, when we reduce mod p, the results of taking these different factors and modding out by p will give us different things um, over here in fp. So hence, um, there'll be just a unique extension um, here, and that's kind of what we'll be using here. Okay, so the uniqueness part is fine and good. So really all we really we need to do is just show that we have an extension. Okay. So let's go let's uh, let's go there. Now the process that we're going to use in seeing that we have this extension is just Newton's method um, for um, similar to what we have in real analysis which is just we take a tangent line to a curve and let's suppose that um, uh, the x-axis is right here. Let's just draw that a little straighter. Okay, okay, well, whatever. It comes here where it crosses, we take tangent line there and we go down and so forth and we get closer to this root. Now that's in real analysis. Um, but we can mimic something like this in piatic analysis, but I mean, it won't look the same at all, but, um, but we can use this exact same formulaic procedure that's being used. Namely, kind of what we're doing is um, thinking, uh, thinking of something like this. Um, this, so we kind of go to from this point to this point, let's call this point right here, the point where we're at currently, xn, yn, and the point where we're heading, xn plus one, yn plus one, um, right here. Now, how are we gonna get, now how do we get to from here to this point? Well, we need to concentrate on this. Now notice this point actually comes from this place right here, which is xn plus one comma zero, which actually lives on the tangent line um, before. So to get that, we can kind of think, okay, it's on that line with line that has, um, so, so right here, if we want to, um, we can think of this um, as being, um, so this is a point on the line. So we can think of zero minus this y n right here. Okay, so the difference of those y values, is gonna be equal to the slope um, at, when we're plugging in, we're plugging in xn at xn times, and then the difference of x values. So xn plus one minus xn from here to here. And so we have a relationship um, between xn and xn plus one that's on the tangent line here. And if we rearrange this, multiply it out, and also note that yn is nothing more than f of xn, then we see that xn plus one is equal to xn minus f of xn over f prime of xn. Okay, so let's, let's think about this now. Now, this right here, at least in, you know, for thinking um, with real analysis and metrics and things like that, I mean, this works great to narrow down and converge if we have the right assumptions on concavity and derivatives and so forth. Now, in a piatic sense, the assumptions will be a, a lot different, but, um, but the same setup works remarkably well. If um, um, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to take as our beginning point um, a solution mod p of the polynomial f. So let's go ahead and look at that. Okay, so um, let's suppose that um, x zero is just simply a, okay? Or maybe, you know, a, just any lift, lift of that solution into zp itself. So let's take a look at that a right here and, and, um, and see what happens. One thing to note, since f is considerably is considered to be separable mod p, um, uh, then um, it's, and being relatively prime 
to its, then F itself will be relatively prime to its derivative in the sense that um, since F of, since A is a solution of F, A will not be a solution of F prime mod P. So namely even mod P, we can divide by it, by F prime of A, which, which will be nice. Okay, so this is the next value kind of in the sequence. It, does it work any better um, at getting us a root? And let's just try it. What happens when we plug in this into our polynomial F? Our polynomial consists of like, you know, powers of, of X that we're sticking this into um, and with different constants over here. Let's think about what's happening. When we plug this in, this in, Then um, as we look at all the binomial expansions, if we just take the first term of all the binomial expansions, um, actually it'll look just like the polynomial itself. We just have A to those with A plugged in. So pretty much if you just collect all the first terms of all the binomial coefficients, including the constant terms, um, we're essentially gonna have F of A. Now look at the second terms in all the binomial expansions as we multiply them out. So the second terms, um, using a binomial coefficient n choose one is just n. And then we, what do we have? So we have um, n and then we have this first guy a to the uh, n minus one. And then we multiply by this, this to raise the first power. So it's just a minus out there and an f of a over f prime of a. And let's collect all those guys. Now collecting all these guys, this is a constant. So this will like factor out of it. And the collection of all those guys adding up all these things, well, guess what that is? That's just a derivative. The derivative of F with A plugged in. So after we factor it out, this is what we get when we collect all those. We just get, and then with a minus here from that minus um, coming in right there, um, because we're just minusing that multiplied to all those guys, we end up getting this, um, just F of A itself. In other words, if, if we collect all the first guys and all the second guys of all the binomial expansions and collect, you know, um, we end up getting just uh, F of A um, minus F of A. In fact, that even comes, I mean, this cancellation just comes from considering the second terms. The constants actually in fact went into this F of A and we end up just getting a nice cancellation. All that we have left are the third terms of the binomial expansions upward now these um, start off with uh, power with this f of a uh, squared over f prime of a squared, um, and uh, and all the other terms just have higher powers of this. Now this um, is not divisible by p at all, but this right here, of course, is in fact divisible by p squared which means that when that this right here is actually congruent to zero mod P squared, whereas when F of A was actually congruent to zero mod P. Um, and so we actually get a solution. So actually F, so if we go to the next guy over, um, we actually get something that works as a solution for F deeper into the filtration um, for the P addicts. Um, which is, which is very nice. In fact, if you think about how we move from term to term, from term to term, we're subtracting this and this guy, as we keep going, gets, um, has a, its valuation, um, in which the P goes up, meaning, um, it's more and more, divis it's divisible by, by higher and higher powers of P, um, which means that we go from term to term. Um, the difference uh, goes, um, has a, uh, at least in the piatic metric, gets, gets very small very quickly, which means it's a Cauchy sequence um, as we go along, which will converge to a specific element. Um, so you get, get the sequence converges and you get that it ends up, and notice how it's a solution for higher, higher powers of P. It's kind of interesting because if you look at this list and I did this, um, I use Sage math and just ran a little bit of code to just look at it as we go along in here and we look at the, um, 
and we look at how uh, the solutions, um, and we take f of this as we go along, um, the uh, valuations really do, they, they go up um, by, uh, let's see, so like, you know, it's mod p squared, the next time will be mod p to the fourth, because imagine replacing a with the next guy up. Um, um, so that would be a solution mod p squared, then take a p squared and imagine raising it to another square, you get p to the fourth. And so it'll be p to the fourth, and then it'll be p to the eighth the next time, then p to the 16th. And you can actually see that and run and look at these valuations go up um, just by, multi um, by multiplying by two each time, which kind of confirms this idea and this proof of what, um, of what, we'll be, what we're looking at. So... Um, indeed, we get an extension, um, and this works inductively. So I kind of talked about it for the case of A, but it really works um, inductively because um, as we go to the next step, this is a solution mod P squared, and then it's a solution mod P to the fourth, and so forth as we move along, which um, I'm just kind of uh, multiplying by two in those powers each time. And uh, so that kind of completes uh, a sketch, an intuitive sketch for how a proof of this, of Hensel's lemma could go um, based upon Newton's method, um, which is very handy here. Um, thanks for watching.